Kamusta mga kababayan? This is America's first and only daily talk show for and about the Filipinos where every day we celebrate Pinoy Pride. But as you know, some occasions are bigger than others and today we have something big to celebrate here sa ating programa because one of our partners is celebrating their 8th anniversary of the company. And you know them here on the show. We get to know them better sa ating The Real Estate Buzz segment. This Real Estate Buzz segment is brought to you by McLeod & Associates, a full-service real estate and mortgage firm. It's not about the number of homes we sell. It's about the difference we make in people's lives. Beauty and brains and heart. Hello, uh, Mia McLeod of McLeod & Associates, and congratulations. Thank you so much. A quick shout-out to you for celebrating your seven-year anniversary. Yeah, but ours so. is seven, yours is eight. My God, so you started a year before we did here on, on the show. Yes. Congratulations, Mia. Let's first talk about you before we you know talk about the company. Let's first talk about you as a couple by an achiever because I've always admired your work. Oh, uh, you are part, and it's not just me, so, you know, it, it, it's very noticeable how you've grown as a professional and um, 30 under 30 yes, uh, that's but right. to be included in that is really a feat right yeah I was very blessed in 2008 also we got uh, nominated as one of the 30 under 30 by the National Association of Realtors so that was really a huge blessing but I actually opened McLeod and Associates when I was 22 years old wow. after graduating from UC Berkeley mm -hmm. and all I really knew is that I had an entrepreneurial spirit and that I enjoyed real estate mm -hmm. but I had no idea really the amount of hard work it was truly going to take to run a business. Yeah tell me about that what was it I'm, I'm sure well they say the start is always the most difficult what yes. were some of the um, obstacles that you came uh, across with? Well many challenges but I mean I started started with no capital. So bless my mom's heart, she let me use a little desk in her office while I saved every penny before I could afford my own lease. And because of course I didn't have any capital, I didn't have the best equipment in the office, right? So I didn't have the best computers, I didn't have the best fax machines, but I was determined really to make it work. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the challenges that um, I've gone through uh, have really contributed to where I am today and I was able to share kind of my experience at a recent event mm -hmm. held by the Filipino American Chamber of Commerce in Orange County and they allowed me to kind of share my experience and there's three things I left with them mm -hmm. that day that I can um, I'd love to share with you here is the number one thing will surprise you but it's hard work right yeah of course yeah yes. so everyone knows that it's really no mm -hmm. secret it's really hard work But okay how how do you know if you to keep pushing or to back off? Some people just work hard all their lives, working hard on something that's not really for them. That's um, very true. Others, while well, others work not as hard, but then they get to places because that's really the field that they're supposed to be in. Okay, you know, I don't know if all entrepreneurs feel this, but. I I think if we were to speak to a, a bunch, and maybe you can even be a testament to this, but true entrepreneurs have this fire inside them. They wake up, they want to conquer the world, they just can't help themselves. They're excited to They're do They're excited to, to do everything and, and, and the passion for what they do. So mm -hmm. I think if you're a true entrepreneur, you know exactly what that feeling is. That fire will never go out. I mean, again, being 22 years old, right. the hard work was there. All my friends, they were clubbing I'm or sure, going 22. to Vegas. Yes. Yeah, going to Vegas on the weekends, right. going to happy hours after drinking, work, drinking, because, you know, yeah. and I was at the office busting my butt off right. till midnight, many nights, and there were times, honestly, where I would cry. I remember my mom could be a testament to this, or my agents, some of my agents, because the work was really so hard, but right. um, I, I quickly learned successful people, they make hard work look easy, effortless, and they do it with a smile on their face. So. What about when you were younger? At 22, you started your own business. Yes. And you, you knew that you've always wanted to be in real estate. Yes. But what about before that? How far back did you know? Were you, what, 10? You get some people, you know, when we're younger, seven, six, whatever. We, you know, when we grow up, we want to be a doctor, we yes. want to be a lawyer. Have you always wanted to be an entrepreneur or a realtor? That's so funny. Actually, I can remember being really young and wanting to be a pediatrician. Oh, so it's, okay. So it's really you, weird. You'd be a good pediatrician. Yeah, a pediatrician. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but, you know, I also really enjoyed real estate. Every time my mom would go look for houses or the touring process, I really liked. And I even remember uh, doing a little workshop when I was like, 
like seventh grade, the little wood plank, and what I built was like a wooden key, almost like a key into a house. It was really weird. Looking back at it now, right. I can see some of the signs. But I did know, as far as I can remember, that I really was an entrepreneur. So whatever business that was going to be, right. I didn't know yet, maybe by seven or eight, I did enjoy certain things, mm -hmm. like touring homes and things like that. Right. But the entrepreneurial spirit was really always there. And when you are pursuing your path, and when you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, you have joy. And you mentioned joy earlier. What was that? OK, joy is one of the other things that kind of help you through the challenges. Because whenever you run a business, or life in general, right, there's challenges. So. Joy is a concept that my pastor shared with me. Mm -hmm. It's actually not my very own. It's something I learned from him. We have a pastor at our office that goes to our office, bless his heart, every Thursday. He drives all the way from L.A. to Walnut to spend 45 minutes with me after work and whoever else wants to join us at the office. And he shared this concept. You know, okay, let's let's pause for a few okay. reminders. We'll keep them waiting a okay. bit. Okay. When we return, we're going to be talking about joy, what joy is okay. and how joy drives Mia to pursue all the activities that she's into and to, uh, to achieve success as well. Yes. You will get tips when we return. Don't go away. This Real Estate Buzz segment is brought to you by McLeod & Associates, a full-service real estate and mortgage firm. It's not about the number of homes we sell. It's about the difference we make in people's lives. Oh, yes, and they have made a difference for sure. Eight years of McLeod & Associates. Congratulations, Thank you. Mia McLeod. Yeah, thank if you're just joining us earlier, we talked about how Mia started the company and some of the struggles and some of the sacrifices she's had to make. But one point and one word, three-letter word that she shared with us earlier was joy. And Mia, what is that again? It was it's shared to you by, by my pastor, pastor, who's like a spiritual mentor to me. And the J in joy stands for Jesus. So every day before I get out of bed, I pray to God. I offer any challenges I'm going through. I offer my business up to him, and I pray that he provides me with wisdom in all the decisions that I make. The O in joy stands for others. This means giving back, whether it's an individual, a community, or an organization. You know, we can all give back in some way or some form, and it doesn't have to be money. It can be time. It can be your talent. You know, one organization I'm very proud to be a part of is Gawit Kalinga, right? Yay! Yay! Yes, they're, you know, yes. they're a nonprofit organization in the Philippines. Philippines that alleviates poverty and the McLeod team took our company trip back there this year and we visited one of the villages, villages. GK and it was truly a blessing. It's heartwarming. It's to heartwarming. See. It's life changing. It was a memorable trip. And yes. see the thing is when you go there you think that you're giving them something but you leave with so much more. They give so much more. Yes. It's so surprising and I'm sure anytime you give back you really take from that situation or that experience so much more. And the last letter in Joy is why. That mm -hmm. stands for you. Mm -hmm. I know it's ironic you as last, but in my experience, when you put God first, you give back to others, you will automatically be blessed. So that has worked for me over the years, helped me get through some of these challenges. And we see Mia here all the time, um, happily explaining even very difficult concepts in real estate to grasp. Um, but Mia, what is it? Are you just always happy? What gets you down? You know, I really believe I am naturally a happy person, but I think having a positive mindset really helps. There's another thing I always share with my clients, my team, my agents at the office. It's called the two M's, mindset and mentors. I mm -hmm. think having a positive mindset is very important. You, you know, your mind is such a powerful machine. Right. If, if you don't uh, build that up to be strong and positive, you'll easily get burnt out by all the challenges, right? And mentors, mentors are a huge part of my life. They can be millionaires, they can be life coaches, they could be people you meet at networking events mm -hmm. or even your family members. But these guys, genuinely want to see you succeed they're always there to uplift you. Who are you. some of your mentors? Well you know I have one life coach who's been with me for over seven years and his name is Dr. Ola Madsen and he actually shared one quote with me that mm -hmm. I'll leave with you and that is there's no such thing as failure there is only result and you know I remember being 22 23 there are a lot of challenges there are business models I felt like I was hitting a brick wall However, now looking back, you know, those challenges again contributed to where I am today. So no such thing as failure, only, only results. results. That's yes. a good one. Keep that. Write that down. Yes. When you said looking back, now looking back, would you change anything? 
You know, no, because I learned from every experience. I feel like even in 2007, 2008, right, we all know the real estate market yes, tanked. Yes. A lot of people in the business got out of the business. Mm -hmm. I remember even 10 real estate offices closing within a run, one mile radius of my office. Mm -hmm. But I was determined to make it work, and I feel like those years and those challenges made me a stronger person, a wiser person, quicker, and made me a, a better business person. Would you say that 2007, 2008 uh, was the most challenging? What was the biggest challenge? If you look back and you think about it, what's the biggest challenge that you've encountered that shaped you into who you are today? It's so funny because I think people People think that the real estate industry when it tanked was the biggest challenge. Mm -hmm. I would say yes that was a hard time for many real estate professionals but starting a business at 22 years old there is um, that's a that was a much bigger challenge in my in mm -hmm. my opinion so right. uh, you know I, I, I would have to say being 22 starting a business managing agents dealing with ageism I mean I had to that are even older than yeah, you I had to convince each and every one of my clients and agents that it was very much capable of handling their real estate transactions right. so that, dealing with ageism at a young age and in real estate it's a very um, physical you know what I mean it's not like selling a product you've right. got to sell yourself sell yourself because yes. it's all relationship based you yes. choose a realtor based on your perception of yes. that realtor based on friendship perhaps or yes. relationships. We're going to be talking about that later, how to choose a realtor that's good for you. But right now, we're also still celebrating the 8th anniversary of yeah. McLeod & Associates. Yes. We looked back now, we're going to look forward. Yes. What else is there for McLeod yes. & Associates? Well, things are really exciting. One thing that I have to sh say and that has kept me going, like you said, is just the sheer passion and love for what I do. Mm -hmm. And I know you've heard this before, but when you love what you do, oh, yeah. you never have to work a day in your life. And it's just simply true, right? Mm -hmm. The second thing that also really keeps me going and that I keep very true to my heart is that I'm a very, very proud Phil Am. And I know my parents sacrificed a lot to gain, to, for me to gain the opportunities I have today, but the Filipino community Community also worked very hard to pave the way for younger Philams like myself. So I always, you know, don't want those sacrifices to go to waste, not just for my parents, but for the Filipino community. So I strive every day to make them proud, to be as much as a role model as I can. So. You do make us proud, Mia. You're yeah. such a great role model as Thanks. well. And so when we return on the show, I, I think even without talking about the things, just by discussing what we just discussed, yes. I know that some of these are criteria, are checklists in okay. other people's um, you know, papers yes. to yes. do, also when they are looking for a realtor. Yes. And we're gonna be talking about that. I think that's why a lot of people connect to you as well, yes. because you're more than just a consummate professional. Yes. You're really, you know, you establish relationships with mm -hmm. your clients. Mm -hmm. We're gonna be talking about that. For those of you that are looking to buy or sell your property, what do you look for in a realtor? That's when we return on the show don't go away this real estate bus segment is brought to you by McLeod and Associates a full-service real estate and mortgage firm it's not about the number of homes we sell it's about the difference we make in people's lives about the number of years that they've been in business, eight years, lends credibility to McLeod and Associates, and that is why congratulations to its founder and owner, and really, you know, a uh, Cabo Bayan pride, Mia McLeod. Hello once again. Welcome to Cabo Bayan today. Earlier, we talked about Mia's success as a Cabo Bayan achiever and what she does, how she gives back. Now, let's talk about business. Let's talk about connecting with a realtor. For those of us that are looking to buy or sell their property, Either one, we need a realtor, right? Yes, you do. And there's more, there's four main traits that I think you should look for in a realtor when you're interviewing, whether it's a buyer or a seller. Mm -hmm. The first one is they need to have great communication skills. They need to be a good listener and they need to be able to communicate and articulate well. You know, a good listener is so important because they need to understand what you as a client are looking for, what your goals are, mm -hmm. and what your expectations are. And they need to communicate that and articulate that to all the other parties involved. Do you have 
to um, when you look for a realtor, is it a different realtor that you need when you're buying and a different realtor when you're selling? Not necessarily. There are some great realtors out there where their niche is both buying and selling. But then you also find some realtors that only focus on buying. So that's why you want to, you know, interview with them, see what their niche product is. Mm -hmm. And if they can do both, then you can hire them for either one. But some do specialize in certain arenas. So when they say a uh, real realtor that specializes in buying, what yes. would be a trait that he or she will have that a realtor that specializes in selling won't have, perhaps? They should understand the touring process. Mm -hmm. They should also understand the inventory. Uh, they need to understand the market that this client's looking in. Um, but generally, sellers should, uh, selling agents should also know that too. Right. So the second trait that I think is very important for realtors to have is to have that problem-solving trait, okay. very solutions-oriented. Whether we're in a buyer or seller's market, there's always going to be challenges here and there. So realtors need to be able to be creative, think outside of the box, and be problem solvers. So when you're interviewing a realtor for the first time and see if you guys will click, a yes. good communicator will be able to explain to you, you can get that right away. Yes. But uh, a problem solver and solutions oriented realtor, it's not quite easy to get that from the first, um, no, uh, first encounter, yeah. right? So what, are there questions we need to ask to see how they respond? They can, uh, things that we've done at our office is we give live examples or past examples of things that have helped, how we can tweak offers, maybe let that buyer seem more cons competitive versus another buyer. In a competitive market like today where inventory is very tight, right? Multiple right. offers and things like that. You want to be able to explain to that buyer how are you going to get them to stand out? What tools or creative things can you do to get my my offer to stand out versus 20 other offers? So that's one question that maybe if you're looking to buy, um, mm -hmm. you can uh, ask, ask your prospective realtor, mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. can you do if, you know, if it's a situation where there's multiple offers, what can you do to make my offer stand out? Exactly. And we talked about that last time you were here, right? Some we did. tips Some to make tips it. To, to tweak that offer a little bit just to make your offer stand out a little bit more. Right. You know, the third trait that I think is very important for a realtor to have is they need to be up to date with technology. <laughs> Believe it or not, right. Janelle, some realtors still don't even know how to text. So shame on them, right? Are you serious? Yeah. Okay. In, in, in a time when we're writing offers on our iPads right. or we're doing digital signatures, you know, um, even fax machines are not being used as much. We're sending everything via email now. So. Yeah. You know, you've got to find a realtor that's up to date with technology because that will affect their efficiency and how quick they are to help you know, deliver to the respond. To if respond. If you have a question, it's easy to email and mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then the last one, you said four tips, right? Four, yes. Uh, I recommend that they're full-time. You know, there are some part-time agents out there, but if you look at the real estate market, it's constantly changing. Full-time agents tend to be more up-to-date with these changes. They're more invested in their career and in the industry and maybe with education um, requirements with the DRE and things like that. So. Uh, versus part-time. They might not be as up-to-date on some of these markets. How many times. agents do you have right now uh, with your company? We have 50 real estate agents and it's our eight-year anniversary and um, I'm now 30 years old. <laughs> <laughs> she said it. Yeah, she I said it. Congratulations Thanks. once again. Do, do years count? Number of years. This is my thing because I've dealt with this again being yes, young, 22, you at 22. Ages, so yes, exactly. I think production is more important because I've run into agents that are 30 years in the business and great, they're 30 years, but they only close one transaction the last year versus mm -hmm. someone who's new, just got in the market, maybe just got their license a year or two years, but they've been closing maybe 10 or 20 transactions. To me, that's the better sign. So of is it experience. okay to ask a realtor how many deals have you closed or how many transactions? have you Abs yeah. worked on in the last Absolutely. Time? You can ask them what their niche products are. You can ask them what kind of maybe loan programs are available. See if they're versed on the financial side. They can guide you well mm -hmm. in that way. Do they know FHA versus a conventional loan? Um, you know, do they, how many offers do they write? Mm -hmm. Are they well versed in short sales? Right. There are some agents that only focus on short sales, and if that's what you're looking for, that might be a good route too. Wonderful. I hope you're taking that notes. But now, before we look for an agent, we need to think for ourselves first is it time to sell or to buy, right? And yeah. how do you know that? That's what we're going to be talking about when we return on the show. Don't go away. about you, but 
for me in the last how many uh, minutes, how many segments, I have been inspired and enlightened and informed and made aware. And that is all courtesy of Mia McLeod here for our The Real Estate Bus segment. This Real Estate Bus segment is brought to you by McLeod & Associates, a full-service real estate and mortgage firm. It's not about the number of homes we sell. It's about the difference we make in people's lives. The question earlier after that last block was, is it time to buy or to sell? That's a great question, and it really depends on the client situation. However, if you look at what's going on in the market right now with tight inventory, multiple offers, price increases, and a high demand, buyers are looking for properties I would say, yes, it's a great time to sell. to sell. You know, one of the recent stats that came out by the National Association of Realtors is one year ago in L.A., uh, home prices have increased 14%. Wow. And they've increased nationwide, but just in L.A. alone, 14% from last year. But I also hear that it's not all across the board. More uh, um, what individual yeah. houses. Yes. What do you call that? Uh, single family single homes family versus, homes condos. versus condos and townhouses. They, the prices increase but not so much for the condos and the townhouses. Is that still? You know, I've been looking back at some of our clients. We always look back at our past clients, 2009, 2010, and I love calling them. I've been recently calling some of them and saying, hey, you guys got a 15 to 20% increase in equity. And these are homes I sold to them just maybe three, four years ago. And okay. I'm able to say, hey, you know, your, your, your equity has increased. And some of them are condos. So I think it also depends on the demographic, the area. Okay, the I'll give area. you my address later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, you if you're selling, how do you make your property stand out better than the one down the street? Oh, there's so many different things, right, you can do to spruce up your property. Upgrades are always nice, but you don't necessarily need to spend that much money on upgrades. Again, right now, tight inventory, uh, you know, properties are getting taken off the market right away, as you can see. So my biggest tip is less is more. Okay. Uh, minimal, no clutter, keep it clean, keep it simple. Right. You want to allow these buyers to walk into that property. They need to be able to envision that space for them and their family. Mm -hmm. Now, if you are an investor, of course, that bought at an auction, a house that needs a lot of work, then if you want the best bang for your buck, you definitely want to go in, remodel it, put some upgrades in there. Um, but if you're a simple homeowner, a humble homeowner that's selling, you don't have to go through all of that. I right see a now. lot of those happening. Some people, will, 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 listings would be there for, some properties would be um, on the list for 60, 90, 100 days, and then they start upgrading. How mm -hmm. do you explain that? If it's such a tight market, how come those properties stay long? Okay, three main things I can think of. The first one is they're still short sales, so we're still dealing with some short sales, okay. and we're at the mercy at the lender's approval for the price of that house, and short sales still take long, you know, anywhere from maybe 60 days and sometimes still up to a year, so that can explain one of the reasons. Uh, a second reason is sometimes a seller, if you see a standard sale out there for over 30, 60 days, then either they're a seller that's unreasonable uh -huh. or there's a something wrong with the property condition. Okay. Maybe there's a huge leak or crack in the foundation or something. So something really aesthetically wrong with the property. And the third thing I can think of is Transactions and contracts, they still cancel. So even though, let's say, a property hit the market and it got taken off the market in the first week, mm -hmm. what if the buyer canceled you know, 30 days later due to a loan or something? So now the listing agent has to go back, relist that property mm -hmm. for sale, remarket it again so it can, it can show on the market that it's actually longer. I hear of some listings that, well, some instances where before the property even makes it to the list, um, it's already being... Did it. Yes. Well, it needs to hit that market first before you could get those listings. But people, you know, will get listings and neighbors will come up and be like, oh, when's this house going to hit the market? Oh, We're okay. interested. So, right. of course, we try to keep in touch with everyone. But a good example of what's going on, we listed a house on Monday uh -huh. last week for 410 uh -huh. By Wednesday, two days later, we had 13 offers, and they were like 50,000 more than the list, but right at 460. Wow. And these buyers are coming in so strong, they're even waiving the appraisal right, right. when yeah. when um when it's like that are they above Yes, they are above, above. so our list price 410 and offers are coming in at 450 460 and they're waiving that appraisal And are these from investors or 
These are homeowners. Some wow. are investors. Some are cash deals. Yeah. yeah. Well, I can't. You know, 30 minutes is not enough. You should come back, and we'll talk more. Yes, but for I'm now, excited. congratulations again, Thank and you. more power to you. Thank you. If you miss any of this, or you want to take down notes, YouTube, YouTube.com/slash Kababayan LA18. Thank you for joining us today. I'll see you again tomorrow.